Charlotte Hudson comes on in to talk about all of the news regarding the weird, strange in the skies above. And John, how are you doing, buddy? I'm I'm doing better than than your goatee, dude. What what happened? Was there an yeah. incident? Like, did did you uh, like have a? You know what? I took my clippers tonight, <laughs> and this true story. I took my clippers and I wanted because it was all shaggy, right? And I put on, you know, one of those protection covers that goes on top. Guess what? Those damn things don't work. They don't work. So I ended up, you know, going right down to the to the skull almost. Absolutely ruined my handlebar mustache. And now I got to regrow it. But the good part about it is I've got it shaped now. So over the next, uh, it'll take me about two weeks. It'll fill in nicely, and we'll go. But you know what? John you sure Amal it's not off by it like a like a little millimeter to the left? It looks like a little no. look, little bit off, a little off. No, you touch okay. there. You touch <laughs> there. Okay, okay. I, I I've had enough of the facial beard jokes already. But you you know what, John? I figured something out. So before hmm. the show, my son and I we went and you know we were practicing guitar. Hmm. My eight-year-old son is officially better than me. Rock on. He was, he was teaching me tonight. That's he was, awesome. He was teaching me. And I'm like, and I forgot a note. I'm like, dude, what what note is that? He's like, Dad, that, that's a that's a D. You know, oh, he goes, dream, and then he starts dude. thinking, oh, Dad. He's like, Don't you remember? It's E G. I, I like I forget the 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 string names. I, I can never remember. I got like a and and like so. Yeah, man. I mean, aside he, from the fun for you, but the, forget the fun for you. The way that locks it in to his brain, him teaching it to you, he will never forget that stuff for the rest of his life. I mean, th th that's yeah. gonna lock in that stuff so good for him. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome, dude. What a what a great experience for both of you. Yeah, he he officially passed me in 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 playing guitar and and now listening to him rock out. Where like he's just nailing power chords and he's adding and he's adding now some actual notes to it. And it, wow, I'm, man, that's awesome. Yeah. And like today, man, he was sitting there, he's got his shorts on, he's got like no shirt on, like total looking like a rock star, right? He's and he's bouncing around, he's got a you know, his his shoulders, his guitar on his shoulder strap, he's bouncing around and he's just kind of like nodding away playing away and he's looking in power chords and i'm like oh dude little dude like this is just amazing daddy is so proud of you but yeah that that was my evening that's tonight. awesome I, dude that's awesome yeah and and the best yeah. part about it is every every uh guitar lesson he goes to now his teachers like afterwards his teachers like like he's just smoking the week before like he'll he'll pick up all the stuff like what he picked up last week. He'll go into this week's lesson tomorrow, and he'll be like, "Am I?" And then afterwards, the teacher will be like, "Yeah, the little dude has it. The little dude's getting it big time right now." Later tonight, I, I want to tell you a story about this, but we should go right. into the news. But but I got a good. But that's yeah. awesome, Dave. Really that's really that. cool to hear that stuff, that's man. Good. I, I'm sorry, proud pop up. Yeah, no, 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 no. Totally with you, man. No, I loved hearing it. Yeah. I loved hearing it. It's all good, man. It's all good. John, we got a lot of cool stuff going on right now. I know. I, I, I know you don't have this in your list for tonight. I know well, you don't. I, and I couldn't even get through the list that I have. So please, uh, I introduce have, whatever you wish. My man, I want to hit you up about something weird that was found on the moon with this Chinese rover exploring the dark side of the moon and seems to find this, this weird looking cube shaped oh, object right. that is totally out of sorts. With what we're seeing on the moon, man, what did, what did you think about this? So, so I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a chance to look into this deeply yet. I, I saw the photograph. I agree, it looks optically, it looks optically very challenging. Um, I, um, oh, man, I know I'm unpopular in this, but like, I, I will just, it, it, it will, it will take some pretty significant evidence for me to believe that there's something that big on the moon that we don't know about, um, because. I, I personally have been involved in this program for the last couple of years called the Frontier Development Program that's run out of uh, out of NASA and Lockheed in the Bay Area, where they invite students to come in from different parts of the country, and they do um, they take all the all the data that NASA has collected on the moon, and they use it to do summer projects 
to to do like you know like to research you know uh, mining operations or or you know whatever the, the, there's like five uh, projects picked and the but the data we have to play with is the moon data and I mean the moon data I mean data down to like a quarter inch of every single inch of that moon including soil content of the whole bloody moon it's mapped out flawlessly and it's very publicly available data and so it just it baffles me how we can have that data. And then we can still have these seemingly, you know, valid stories that raise some serious questions as to whether there's anything on the moon that we can account for. And so I struggle with it. I, I, I mean, that that building, I mean, looking, if you haven't seen the photo yet, it is all it's, over the internet. You, you can go to futurism.com. They've got a, a giant article on it. This looks like a, a, a building. It. it you know, I don't know what distance the photo was taken at from Lunar Rover U22. Yeah. I, I I don't know, but I mean, well, and this... the other problem is there's a lot of garbage on the moon. There's a lot True. of garbage on the moon, and no one likes to talk about it. But the it, the truth of the matter is, is it, it's you know, it's not unlike Everest. You know, whenever we reach the edge of where we can get to, we don't worry too much about cleaning up after ourselves. Um, the, the, so the you know, thing, the thing that bugs me about it, John is this is probably the only photograph we'll ever get you know yeah the and, but the thing is is that when that when that happens dave honestly when that happens like i, I know the, the the inclination is to is to think it, it's a conspiracy and something's gotten covered up but my, in my experience when that happens it's because what they found was when you took that picture from any other angle it didn't look like that true it was because it was a unique true. angle picture that, that that created the image well, At least i would have liked to, i would have liked to have seen them Drive oh, I'd like the coordinates. Over. Oh, yeah. I'd like the coordinates so I can go there in a in a in a in a in a moon model and see what's actually there. What we think is there. We can go look and see what we think is there based on the data we have. So I'd lo I'd love to be able to contrast those two things. For sure. Absolutely. Well, let's move on to another topic because you got a weird one here, and I'll get to that the Chinese rover later on in the news. All right, but you got a weird one here regarding the ballad of the TTSA. Oh, uh, my yes. as we are encroaching on the four year anniversary here in about 11 days for the New York Times article. Yes. Yes. So um, so basically there was a there was a, a pretty lengthy, a lengthy debate uh, today on Twitter uh, about like, you know, what you know, what was going on with the Creta? Why did the Creta happen? Um, you know, what, um, you know, what was the, what was the meaning of it? What was the angle of it and so forth? And it looks like we lost Dave, but I'll keep going. Um, and so essentially, um, I went through and did this analysis and, um, and basically, well, I can't say who, um, this was confirmed by a, uh, the highest source I could certainly get my access to. Right. Um, and, um, and basically what I, what I, what I came to believe and what I, what I came to believe in my research was that essentially the Creta was all a maneuver to get funding that, that year, 2020, they were trying to get into the military funding bill. And so they agreed to do the Creta because they wanted to be able to, then when they were in the bill and someone's presenting the bill, they can say, and look. TTSA is already in, engaged with the army on this crater. So of course we should fund that program, right? So it was a way of, of solidifying their, their place. The crater was their last ditch effort to do this. When they didn't make it into the bill, when they couldn't raise the money by the, by the movies, this is the whole reason why justice left. This is the whole reason why, um, uh, put off moved into the uh, advisory role. This is the whole reason why uh, Elizabeth, like this was the catalyst that that broke everything. And um, and essentially, I decided to kind of write it up because it was being questioned today, um, and there was a big debate going on it. And and I, I can say that at least you know, uh, assuming you know, as far as someone can trust me, that uh, I have had this confirmed by by the one person that could really confirm it. Well, I mean, when we look at everything that's gone on through the TTSA and and over the years, I mean, they started out strong, you know, but now it's just, you know. I, I can't tell you how many startups I've been involved in that I've known or that I've worked for personally where the first thing we went to go do was beautiful and we tried and we blew it. And the second time we tried, the thing we tried to do, it wasn't quite as pretty. And we still blew it. And the third thing we, we were asked to do, we had to do. We didn't have a choice. And it wasn't pretty. And we weren't proud of it. 
and it happens. That's just how startups go. Hal Putov has apparently confirmed it, according to John Jonathan Davies. Yes. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's move on to our next topic du jour on the Unbiased UFO Report. AOI MSG, the great, great <laughs> acronym for UFOs of the Pentagon. Whoever thought of this one must have been slam dunk drunk when coming up with a name for this. Yeah, so so there, there really used to be this acronym called PCMCIA. Uh, in technology. And, and I don't know what it officially stood for, but what it ended up standing for was people can't remember industry standard computer acronyms. And that's how we all got to know it because that's what we all thought it really stood for, but that's not what it really stood for. And uh, my only, my only guess, this is my only guess is that whoever did this named it that to harm it flat out. I, I can think of no other reason. I can think of no other reason to give it that kind of acronym. But what I think is interesting is, is that there is quite a lot of back and forth still going on about what position this, this group had and why it came out. And I was quite surprised to see that, that essentially, um, you know, through this um, uh, article that I'll, I'll link um, um, uh through um oh bloody i didn't even include the link here so i apologize i'll include the link to the article so i can't even name who it is i have quotes and i missed the article the uh, periodical name i apologize um but essentially you have even quotes from our very favorite person susan goff and she says the department is committed to transparency with the congress and with the american people while balancing its obligation to protect classified information spokeswoman susan gao, gao said in a written statement in executing the oh i I just want to say, oh my God, message. That's like that's all I can think of every time I see that. Oh, A A O I M S G mission. Department will keep Congress fully and currently informed, both in classified and unclassified det details of activities and findings to enable effective, con effective congressional oversight and accountability to the public. The department is eager to work with Congress as it com as it completes its fiscal year 22, 2022 legislation to to posture the A O I M S G for success. So here you have her actually standing up for this organization, even though you have in several periodicals, people basically, you know, people from the Pentagon defending it saying, no, we're not trying to circumvent Congress. No, no, no. We're, we're not trying to, we're not trying to hamstring this, this, this program. No, we have tremendous respect for, for Gillibrand's uh, 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 work up and we look forward to working with her and just, you know, laying down all this BS, you know, and it's just, I, I'm amazed to watch it all going on. It's, it's really fascinating. All right. This also comes on the heels of the news that it's looking like the Senator Gillibrand, uh, notes on on uh, and an article to push forward through Congress and the Senate regarding transparency in UFOs has been put in neutral and is stalled as of right now. Oh no that that's actually that's you, you got me on that one. That but that but that's news to me. I had not heard that myself. So um I, I had heard that there were that were that there were um that there were portions of that bill that were on hold but I did not portions, hear that yeah. it was specifically I did not hear it was specifically this portion that was on hold. So well, uh, either way it there's risk. You know what here's what I'm thinking on that if I could give my three and a half cents because that equals out to about one penny in the US. All right. What I would like to suggest is this. I think it's stalled on purpose because this fight between the military industrial complex and the elected officials, they don't want this to happen. Neither side wants this to happen. And I believe it allows a lot more lobbying to go on behind the scenes and more defense contracts to be spread out. And therefore, I really do believe we're seeing the demise of UFO talk in the U.S. government. Well, okay, I, I would agree with you up to the very end. I would agree with you up to the very end. In that, but I think you're right in that. That I think that if you think about it, no Congress wants to pass any legislation that they don't think is going to be respected, right? And True. so if they know that there's already this 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 hamstring operation going on, right? They're not going to want to push that forward. So they're going to want to get all of this settled before they move forward with the legislation. So that that actually makes some sense. And I agree. I think it throws a lot of, of chum into the water to make this whole thing a lot more messy. And to make it go away. Because in the Quite end, possibly. 
The subject will not go away, but the detailed information, the videos, they'll disappear. John, thank you so much for a great unbiased UFO report.